أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وافتح علينا بمعرفة العلم وسهل أخلاقنا بالحلم وجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم جعل أعمالنا خالصة لوجهك ولا تجعل فيها حظا لغيرك وصل اللهم على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة وبركاته How's everyone today? Alhamdulillah. Whoa. Let's just leave that down there. Let me just see if I can figure something out here quickly. Maybe like that? I think it is can everybody still hear clearly? Yeah, cool. Okay, new setting. Alhamdulillah. Class is so big. But we say Alhamdulillah for that. Um we continue with uh our surf for today. Um what were we learning here? Just because it's a new environment, it's not like so strange that everybody has to be quiet. Maybe I must keep that, yeah. You can still answer me like normal, inshallah. Um, so, we're busy with sarf. In, s- in sarf, we said we're dealing with what kind of word? We're dealing with a fi'al, right? Which is a verb in Arabic. Um, what specifically are we focusing on in the subject of sarf? Change, right? And what about change? How changes in the the form of a word uh, cause a change in the the meaning of a word. Thus far, we have covered um, two changes. We looked at a standard verb, and we changed the endings of those of those verbs. That changed who did the action. Is that correct? Right. Then we changed. The following week we changed, which was last week, what, uh, what change did we do? We changed the letters, the root letters of the verb, and that changed what? What did that change? Oh, sorry. It changed the, the action that was being done. So that's why we learned two changes. Today, inshallah, we learn another change. Today's one is very slight. Um, after learning that change, we'll do some repetition of scales, doing some um and some exercises to now see what we've learned in uh in a real circumstance in context in a text right we want to identify what we've learned in a text once we're done with that inshallah and once we've mastered that we can move on to the next scale altogether right that changes differently and that creates a different change in the meaning and uh inshallah we'll get there next week hey. The scale that we will be completing today, inshallah, and the one we're going to start next week, those form the, the, the bedrock or the foundation of your understanding of sarf as a whole. Right? And uh, once that's done, the difficult part of sarf is really, really over. And inshallah, it will open up a, a uh, you know, window of opportunity for everybody to understand Arabic uh, in a much easier way. So for today... That's getting a bit ahead of ourselves for today, where we must by revising. So before we get into anything else, everybody, I want everybody to say the scale for me quickly. One, two, three, go. Fa'ala. Allah, the guys are in the hurry this week. Let's also. In unison, inshallah. All together. Mark you. Fa'ala, fa'alu, fa'alat, fa'alna, fa'alta, fa'altum, fa'alti, fa'altunna, fa'altu, 
فعلنا again one more time فعل فعلوا فعلت فعلنا فعلت فعلتم فعلتي فعلتنا فعلت فعلنا good ما شاء الله I should be able to throw like those words on the board and you give me answers or tell me, translate them for me. Inshallah, it will even be, a bit later we'll try and do this, where I give you some of the English words and you uh, give me what they mean. But we'll do that a bit later. For now, we'll just do some more skills. We have root letters. Fataha. What does Fataha mean? To open. Create a scale for that as well, right? So let everybody do that together. فتح فتحوا فتحت فتحنا فتحت فتحتم فتحتي فتحتنا فتحت فتحنا One more time فتح فتحوا فتحت فتحنا فتحت فتحتم فتحتي فتحتنا فتحت فتحنا what does daraba mean? To hit. So say that scale for me. Daraba, bu, darabat, darabna, darabta, darabtum, darabti, darabtunna, darabtu, darabna. Again. Daraba, darabu, darabat, darabna, darabta, darabtum, darabti, darabtunna, darabtu, darabna. One more, Nasara. But don't say this everybody together. Uh, with your partner, just say, each of you say it to your partner quickly. And if you don't know it, then your partner must give you a hiding, inshallah. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Let's just say it to your partner quickly. Nasara. Nasara. <coughs> oh, man. Was it doing that earlier as well? Was it doing that earlier? But was it doing that earlier as well? Okay. Okay, everybody done? It shouldn't take that long to say the scale. Everybody should be done. So all of us together quickly once. One, two, three, go! Nasara, Nasaru, Nasarat, Nasarna, Nasarta, Nasartum, Nasarti, Nasartunna, Nasartu, Nasarna. Right, good. Then I told you guys to do two for homework. Oh, those are the ones we did all in class. We did two for homework. What's the two for homework? Malaka and Kataba. Right, so let's say those two quickly. What does Malaka mean? Malaka means to? To own or possess. And kataba? To write. To write. Okay, so let's everybody say the scale together. Malaka. Ku. Malakat. Malakna. Malakta. Malaktum. Malakti. Malaktunna. Malaktu. Malakna. Again, one more time. Malaka. Malaku. Malakat. Malakna. ملكت ملكتم ملكتي ملكتنا ملكت ملكنا. Pass one of these ones. كتب. كتبوا كتبت كتبنا كتبت كتبتم كتبتي كتبتنا كتبت كتبنا. One more time. كتب كتبوا كتبت كتبنا. كتبت كتبتم كتبتي كتبتنا كتبت كتبنا good mashallah I know for many this may sound like repeating stuff it's a lot of repetition exactly what it is it's just repetition we are trying to drill a scale a template into our minds such that when I hear it or I see it again I don't even have to think about what it means I already know I don't even have to think about the scale 
picture that exists in my mind just directs me exactly to the meaning of that word. It must become like second nature to us. Right? And because we didn't grow up hearing it all the time, it's slightly unnatural, but we're trying to drill it, drill it into our brains by saying it all the time. Um, so yes, it is a lot of repetition. But inshallah, that repetition will, will lead us to understanding in the light of So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to chuck some words on the board. Right? I'm going to put some of them will be Arabic words, then I want you to give me the English. For some of them, I'm going to put English stuff set, uh, like sentences on the board, and I want you to give me the, the Arabic word that corresponds to it. Right? I want you to wait three seconds before saying any word, because for each of these words now you have to focus on two changes. You have to think about who's doing the action, and you have to think about what action is being done, right? So you need to identify the root letters and you need to identify the ending, right? Just for practice. So let's see. What do we have here? Katabna. One, two, three, go. What's it? We wrote. Very easy, right? When, when you hear that now, nah, you don't have to think. You already know it's doing. And that's something more than we could identify two weeks ago, for that matter. For, for many of us, for the, at least for the first time. So, Alhamdulillah, one step closer to understanding the Quran. Let's see. Nasarna. Nasarna. They, many females, helped. Good. Fatahta. You, one male, open. Good, mashallah. Fa'alti. You won? Female? Did, right. Nasarat. Nasarat? Very many females, what's it? She? One female. She helped. Everybody in agreement? Good, mashallah. Actually, the, the ones when I put English on is going to come later. Katabu. Ah, oh, there's a mistake there. Is that a verb? That's actually not a, not a word in Arabic. Right? Uh, how do you know? Is that a verb? Katabu. No. At every step of, of, of the way, I need you to tell me. If that word doesn't fit on any of your scales that you know, then you tell me you are wrong. It's not a verb. Actually, you don't know all the verb scales yet, so there are uh, lots of possibilities where... You may think a word isn't a verb, but it actually is. But this one shouldn't be there. What should it be? Katabu. Right. And katabu will mean what? They, many males, wrote. Good, mashallah. Fatahtu. I? What did I do? Opened. Tarabtum. Tarabtum. Tarabtum, tum, tum. You, you many males, hit, right. Nasartunna. You, many, females, help. Yeah. I think I'm being a little bit sexist here. All the ladies doing the nice things and the guys eating. Astaghfirullah. Next time I must change it. Ladies can eat for a bit. Fa'alum. Fa'altum. You, many males? Did. Right. Fa'alna. They, many females? Did. Oh, so easy. Darabtunna. You, many females? Hit. Okay. Right. That's enough of that. Just about all of those verbs that we did previously, they fit exactly on our scale. All of the ta- harakat, all of the tashkil, they were exactly the same. A, A, A. A, A, U. A, A, At. Etc, etc, etc. The root letters changed. Other than that, the, the scale said exactly the same. However, there is a slight um, twist in the story over here. It doesn't 
always have to be exactly like that. The harakah on the middle letter, what's the middle letter in this word? What, what letters do we have here? Seen, mim, ain. How do you think that word sounds? How? Who says sama'a? There's two. Who says samu'a? What is this like? Everybody abstaining? <laughs> Who says sami'a? Well, that's a lot of people. Why? It just sounds right, eh? Yeah, well, that's correct. This verb is sami'a. Sami'a. Well, you may know it from salah. Uh, sami'a Allahu liman hamida. Sami'a. Sami'a means what? Sami'a means to hear. But my focus right now isn't on what Sami'a My focus is on the fact that Sami'a doesn't look exactly the same like Fa'ala. What's the change between the two? Very simple. The second root letter has a different harakah. Before it was Fa'ala. So what is in the middle root letter? A fatha, a ah sound. What about this one? Yeah, it has an e sound on the second root letter. And it's also possible to have verbs that have a u on the second root letter. So what change are we doing today? Verbs th on this scale, past tense verbs that fit exactly on the same format, they don't have to only have fathas. The second root letter, only the second root letter. Let's let me be clear about that. Only the second root letter can have a different harakah. Only that one. So I can have, for example, fa'ala. I can have something on the scale fa'ila or fa'ula. But everything else stays the same. How is that going to change the meaning? For now, we're not going to focus on that change in meaning. Because it doesn't actually really change the meaning at all. Right? It doesn't really change the meaning at all. It does have a different nuance in the meaning. But for now, we're not going to focus on that. Just looking at the, the structure of the word. So what is it that we learned right now? On this scale, on this first scale, the past tense scale, the second root letter can have a different word. Haraka, that's all. Bas, that's it. So let's hear. Samia, everybody say that for me. Samia, Samia, Samiat, Samia, 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 Tum, Samia, Ti, Samia, Tuna, Samia, Tu, Samia. Not very hard, right? It's just a slight change. The beginning is A, is a E. But everything else is the same. A, E. Same thing. So everybody say that one again. Samia means to hear. So let's just say this one with a meaning. Samia, he heard. Samia, they many males heard. Samiat, she heard. Samia, they many females heard. Samiata, you one male heard. Samiatum, you many males heard. Samiati, you one female heard. Samiatum, Samiatuna, you many females heard. Samiatu, I heard. Samiana, we heard. Right. Let's look at another one. Ha, seen, ba. How do you think that one sounds? Saba, Hasiba, Hasuba, which one? Hasiba. That's, that's correct. It's Hasiba. What does Hasiba mean? Hasiba means to think. Hasiba means to? To think. The previous one is Samia means to hear. I told you, you know, uh, a statement where that comes in which we say daily in our salah. Samia Allahu liman hamidahu. Allah hears or Allah heard the one that praised him. Sami Allahu. Oh, and I gave you the one that's for homework also. 
if you took note. Anyways, this one here is hasiba. Hasiba means to, to think. Right now, how are you figuring out whether it's supposed to be a, a i, or u? You're just going on what I'm telling you, right? For most people that, uh, that uh, don't have a background in Arabic. You're just going on what I'm telling you. There's actually a way to, to know properly, like, without me having to tell you. But that's uh, going to require us to know how to use the dictionary. Um, and inshallah, in a couple of weeks, maybe two, two or three weeks, I'm going to ask everybody to have a dictionary. Um, either one that you can purchase. So in the meantime, it's good to have as a companion to your study of Arabic, a good Arabic dictionary. The simple one that we use in class generally is the Hans Weyer uh, dictionary. You can download an app on your Android phone and I think on Apple as well that has a dictionary. So you don't actually need to purchase it if you don't want to. You can just download the app on your phone and we can work with it from there. Right? But more about that when we get there. So all that I'm telling you is there is a way to know this without somebody having to tell you. You can find it out for yourself. But it's going to require you to know a little bit about how to use the, the dictionary. But inshallah, we'll get there. And after I teach you how to use the dictionary, then you can just go crazy learning a whole lot of words because we all love reading the dictionary, right? Right. Everybody say the scale for me. Hasiba. Hasiba. Hasibu. Hasibat. Hasibna. Hasibta. Hasibtum. Hasibti. Hasibtunna. Hasibtu. Hasibna. It's so easy, everything stays the same. It's like the pattern is just flowing, man. That's right, so everybody says it again for me, but now what's the meaning? Hasiba, he thought. Hasibu, they many males thought. Hasibat, she thought. Hasibna, they many females thought. Hasibta, you one male thought. Hasibtum, you many males thought. Hasibti, you one female thought. Hasibtunna. You many females thought. Hasibtu. I thought. Hasibna. We thought. Yeah. I'm saying it's easy to motivate you. If you're not finding it easy, don't worry. In due time, inshallah, it's all sinking. Question? Is there a way to identify the, the middle letter? Um, it will require you um, to now to use a dictionary, basically. The dictionary will tell you what that letter is supposed to be. You can't just make up anyone or choose anyone. Um, there's a specific one for every root letter combination. Sometimes a root letter combination can have more than one. Um, but I'll show you that when we, uh, when, we, when we learn how to use a dictionary. For example, khalaqa can be said khalaqa and can be said khaliqa. But we'll see that when, when, I, when we work with the dictionary, inshallah. For now, just listen to what I tell you. Here's another set of root letters. Kaf, Ra, Mim. How do you think this one's going to sound? Karima. No, that's my wife's name. <laughs> no. Uh, that's Karima, actually. This one is Karuma. 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 And karuma means to be generous or to show generosity. That's why if you say a person is generous, says Rajulun Karim, is a, 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 a generous person. To be generous. Okay. Karuma. So everybody say the scale for me. Karuma, Karumu, Karumat, Karumna, Karum, Karumtum, Karumti, Karumtuna, Karumtu, Karumna. One more time. Karuma, Karumu, Karumat, Karumna, Karumta, Karumtum, Karumti, Karumtuna, Karumtu, Karumna. So I know you may be thinking this guy is just me that I add down now. The main part of the scale is how those words end the first haraka and the third haraka. We know now that the second one is flexible. The second one is flexible and the root letters can always change. Right. That actually is 
all that we wanted to focus on in relation to this first scale. So if you spend time outside of class, whenever you have time, mastering this ability to actually say these scales, then inshallah, this main part of Sarf, this very uh, fundamental part of Sarf, is uh, will be out of the way, and you know that will open up the doors for everything else being so much easier for you in future, in your Sarf future, if you want to call it that. Right? So I implore everybody, please, if you don't already have these scales down, learn them very well. Right? F starting off with a fa'ala scale. And then trying to apply to all of these different root letters. You must, must, must do that. I can't stress how important it is. It must be so ingrained in your brain that you don't have to think about it. And you don't ever have to think about it for even many years we want to be understanding the Quran after this. Right? So just it's just a repetition, just repeat it, just repeat it. It pays off at the end of the day. Right. Okay. So uh, what does that mean? What is that word over there? Faalti. Faalti is you one female did. How do I say you one female were generous? I need to first understand what's the root it is. Karum. Okay, and how do I say you want female? T. Karum T. Right. Nasrat, what does that mean? That means to help, right? But who's helping? Nasrat. She won. No. She won female. Yeah, that's right. I was pointing wrong. How do I say she thought? What's to think? What's really to think? Hasiba. Okay, so how do I say she thought? Hasibat. Right. How do I say they many males wrote? They many males, how does that sound? Ooh. What's the rule is to write? Kataba. Katabu. Okay. Tarabtunna. Tarabtunna. You many females. What did you do? Hit. Okay, I'm going to give you some more. But now I want you to think about it. Take four, five seconds. And then you can shout it out. Fatah. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, what's it? I. Fatah. Open. Look, there's some component of this that I can't do for you as well. Learning vocabulary, you have to do yourself. Right? Learning the root letters and what they mean, nobody can do. That you have to just do on your, on your own. And your ability to understand words in the language, especially Arabic that works on this root letter system, it requires you to know what action is related to a set of root letters. If you have that down, your vocabulary can grow very, very quickly. Right? But you must uh, put in some effort to actually link that meaning to that set of root letters. I heard. What's to hear? Samia, okay, and I, I heard? Samia? Two, right. Darabtum. You many? You many males? What did you do? Hit. Guys still hitting. You many males thought? Hasibtum. Okay. Skip the rest of that. What I want you to do now is. From the scales we learned. What did we learn today? Samia, Hasiba, Karuma. Samia, Hasiba, Karuma. You guys have groups that you're working in Nahu, right? Right? So uh, get into your groups quickly and then you say those scales to each other. Right? One person in the group at least say one scale. You can choose from any of the three that we learned today. Say it to each other in your groups. I'm going to ask the tutors to go around to help you. Uh, if they see any mistakes or anything like that, right? The class is very big, so I can't see if everybody is understanding. That's why we have our, our tutors here. Now quickly, quickly.
Just as a strong recommendation, you should try and do it with the pointing, it helps, I think. I think the first week Monaco Leon I decided okay let's just drop all the deals. We'll see later. We'll, we'll maybe do it over this year next year. Yeah, Especially. Because that used to also put pressure on that's mm. why I'm enjoying this moment. Alhamdulillah. It's easy. Alhamdulillah. I know I know but I can see how quickly people can catch on. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. I see my, my nieces also here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, 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 uh, Martins. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Okay, uh, before you guys carry on, can I just have everybody's attention quickly? Can I just have everybody's attention? Um, our time together today is nearing its conclusion. We had a slightly shorter period today because of happenings that were not in our control. Um, I just want to go through the homework. Uh, I intended to do one of the exercises in class, right? Um, can I just have somebody's homework, please? please? Yeah, put it on. Ooh. Um. Okay. The one I intended to do in class today is the sheet here. It says here. Yeah? Is that in my pocket? Okay, the one I intended to do today was this one. It says here, verb identification exercise. 
it might seem daunting. Oh, there's a whole lot of Arabic words in there. I don't know what it means. Those are actually Quran ayat. I don't expect you to know what they mean. Right? If you do know what it means, then I don't know why you... Right? So, this sheet over here, what I wanted you to do is, which I intended to do as an exercise in class, I wanted you to read through it with your partners, but now it will have to be homework. Read through the verses and just underline or highlight all of the words that you think are past tense verbs. So how are you going to know if it's a past tense verb? You're not going to know the root letters necessarily, what it means, but you might just be identify. Is it a, 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 u, a, a, at, or a, i, a, a? Is it any of those scales, for example? I'll give you an example. I read the verse, وَلَمَّا بَلَغَ أَشُدَّهُ I have the first one there. بَلَغَ That looks like بَلَغَ فَعَلَ Right? So what I do is I underline that. That looks like a past tense verb to me. And it is actually. Right? So that was what I wanted to do in class. For homework, um, I have there as a homework point, memorize the entire scale number one with the meanings. That's if you haven't already done it. Right? That needs, that's extremely important. Then the other homework is, I want you to write out the scale. The same one that we've been doing. All, all of the scales that we've learned thus far is just different forms of the first scale. Right? Using the root letter Hamida and Aduma. Hamida means what? Samia Allahu li Hamidahu. Hamida means to praise. Hamida means to, to praise. And the next one is Aduma. Aduma means to be great. To be great. Oh majestic. So for those, I just want you to write out the scales. For practice, to get it drilled into your mind. Then as another piece of homework, like we've been doing before, I have here the sort exercise number three, which has some Arabic words and some uh, English words. I want you to translate them to the other language. It's just a continuation of what we've been doing all along. However, I've put new root letters into this. So now you'll see it has Taraba, Fataha, Nasara, Karuma, Hasiba, Samia. Um, yeah, all of those are there. The reason I put all of those root letters there is I want you to get used to those, those meanings, those words, the meanings, and how the changes occur. And then it's going to seem like a lot now because there's an extra one. Um, the following page is again very similar to what we had last week. Some verses of the Quran, parts of verses of the Quran, I want you to translate them. Translate them how? Using the vocabulary sheet that's on the next page. In addition to the vocabulary sheet, or rather omitted from the vocabulary sheet, are the verbs that we learned today. So you won't necessarily find on the, um, like one of the words we learned today was Samia. In the first verse it says, وَإِنَّا لَمَّا سَمِعْنَا الْهُدَىٰ آمَنَّا بِهِ وَإِنَّا لَمَّا سَمِعْنَا You're not going to find the meaning of سَمِعْنَا on the vocabulary sheet because سَمِعْنَا we learnt in class today. So I want you to apply that to your understanding of the verse. That's the homework that we have for today, inshallah. Once all of that homework is done, inshallah, we can, if you have any questions that you need to ask about this first, when we come back next week, inshallah, you can ask those questions. And then we'll move on to the present tense scale. So not saying uh, things that happened in the past, I did, I hit, I broke, I whatever. We will learn how to say, I am doing. I am helping. I am hearing. Or, it's a, you get the point. We're going to change the tense next week, inshallah. Right? Um, so, yeah. If there are any questions or anything like that, please don't hesitate to ask. Mullah Khalil told me he didn't have time to give you guys an asiyah. 
So um, you asked me to give nasiha, but our time's actually up. So what I'll do is I'll just share with you one hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Listen up, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith This is just one that pops into my head right now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Ad-dunya mal'una Mal'oon, ad-dunya The earth is accursed Mal'oon ma fiha What is in it is accursed that sounds very dumb, uh, doom and gloom and very uh, negative at the beginning. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was never a negative person. He was never a negative person ever. But he's telling us the reality of the world that we're in. He says, the world is accursed and everything in it is accursed. So then if I think of it, if I just stop over there, I think, well, then I'm, I'm pretty messed up. I'm in this world, I have to be here. But thereafter, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives us a way to make everything that we experience in this world not be accursed, to make it blessed. What does he say? The world is accursed. What is in it is accursed. إِلَّا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ وَمَا وَالَاهُ وَعَالِمٌ أَوْ مُتَعَلِّمٌ Except the remembrance of Allah. And what is connected to the remembrance of Allah and a person of knowledge and a person that is learning. Look at that. So we should count ourselves blessed to be amongst the people that are, that are studying, studying such things that will uh, bring about within them a greater sense of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I must just clarify something. The verses, the hadith is not negative. The hadith is telling us that whatever you do in this world, if it's disconnected from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it brings you no blessing. But even the most mundane things that you do in life, if it's connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is blessed and it will bring you goodness. Whether that thing be brushing your teeth in the morning, if you do it in a state of consciousness, even if you do it out of habit, but that habit is that I want to um, you know, have a good breath that I don't harm people with, uh, with uh, foul smells or something like that then even that is something that is blessed and will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'm going to say the hadith again. Ad-dunya mal'oonatun. The earth, the world we live in, is accursed. Mal'oonun ma fiha. What is in it is accursed. Illa dhikrullahi. Except the remembrance of Allah. Wa ma wa lahu. What is connected to it and what follows on from it. Wa alimun. And a person of knowledge. Aw muta'allim. Or... A person that is acquiring knowledge, a person that is that is learning. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always make us of those that are learning and those that know as well that we may not be of the accursed uh, parts of this world. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us such positive people and such conscious people that whenever we do things, we do them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in mind. Such that everything in our lives can be blessed and nothing can be cut off from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The nasiha is, let's try to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything we do. And more than our sarf and more than our nahu and more than any of these things, if the simplest person did the most mundane actions with consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with Allah at heart, the world would be a beautiful place. It's only when we disconnect from Allah that things become salid and ugly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us beautiful in every way. Because of connectedness to him, وجزاكم الله خير وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.